this raised bed looks pretty normal, but let's dive deeper under the undergrowth. The luscious greenery is under siege from some voracious plant predators. Left unchecked, they would demolish the whole raised bed. For centuries, aphids have been at the centre of a battle with agriculture. They can decimate entire crops and wreak financial ruin for farmers. But how can an insect so small cause so much damage? In order to defeat them, we need to understand them. They are an incredible species, programmed to survive. They are the definition of resilience. And as much as farmers and gardeners despise these creatures, I can't help but think to myself, they have earned their place on this planet. Let's explore their fascinating life cycle. At the start of spring, aphids have two main priorities, feeding and reproducing. They have a mouthpiece called a stylet, which is like a long straw. They use it to pierce into the plant to extract the sweet sap. Sometimes it leads to an allergic reaction from the plant, much like a mosquito bite to a human. The sap that they extract is full of sugar, so much so that they can't digest it all. They excrete it as honeydew. The leftover honeydew can be a vector for molds and viruses. Their energy and nutrients depleted from the aphids, the plants can now become susceptible to these diseases and die. Ants will actively farm aphids. They'll feed on the honeydew and become the aphids' bodyguards, fiercely protecting them from any predators. They go through four nymph phases and molt each time. A telltale sign of an aphid colony being successful will be the white skins that they leave behind. You'll often find them attacking new growth, like buds or under leaves, going for the veins. If you look carefully, you may see some red dots on their backs. But don't let that fool you. They're not markings at all. In fact, they're eyes. Aphids in the summer give birth to live young. These first stage nymphs are carbon clones of their mother. It will take her 20 minutes to give birth to each nymph. She will do this up to 10 times a day. Each one of these nymphs will be female, but every single one of them are born pregnant. When the resources are depleted, or there's not enough space on the plant, the mums switch gear again. They give birth to clones with wings. They can't fly well, but all they need to do is travel to the next plant and then the cloning process starts again. When we get to autumn and winter, the mums switch gear again. They give birth to winged male and female nymphs. Meanwhile, leaving behind a trail of destruction. In some species, these male aphids don't even have mouths. Their single job is to mate with a female from a different bloodline. By doing this, the females strengthen their bloodlines. Once mated, these females in winter lay eggs and the eggs can survive through harsh, dry, cold conditions. When the eggs hatch in spring, the cycle starts again. After all of this research and creating this video, I've come to appreciate just how amazing these creatures actually are. Do I want them all over the place like I do now? Probably not. But I now value their presence on my ecosystem. I'll need them as a valuable food source for my beneficial insects. 
if you've learned something new don't forget to give this video a like and also if you haven't already subscribe to my channel hopefully i'll see you again soon bye